The next thing that we need to be able to do is to find the equation of a line from a graph. Now, <clears throat> we have slope intercept form and we have standard form. What I teach my students to do is I teach them how to find the equation of a line in slope intercept form. And then, if you need to put it into standard form, you're just going to have to go through, do the algebraic manipulation, and get the equation into standard form if it's necessary. Now, when you look at slope intercept, you need a slope and you need a y intercept. So, hence, to write the equation of a line from a graph, I have you calculating m, which is the slope. And we can do that from a formula or by counting. Then I have you finding the y-intercept or finding b. And then you just write it in slope-intercept form. So now, let's talk a little bit about calculating m. There is the formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And there's also a way to count it. One of the things that I haven't talked about with you yet is that slope is also the rise over the run. So how far up or down it goes versus how far across it goes. The rise, a positive rise would be going up, a negative rise would be going down. A positive run, which is the left right, is going to the right. A negative run is going to the left. So you can use the formula or you can count it, either way, whichever you're mo most comfortable with. I'm going to do it both ways with these equations. All right, or with these lines to find the equation. So here's our first graph. Now I don't have the grid lines like you do on your notes, but I've done my best to construct them so that it's easy to see here. We have two points, you need two points for a line. And we have to calculate the slope or find the slope. All right, if you want to do it with the formula, this first, and I always just go with the left-hand point for being the first point. So the first point here has a value of negative 3 for x and negative 2 for y. The second point has a value of 0 for x and negative 1 for y. So if we want to calculate m, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We're going to go on ahead. I'm just going to erase this a little bit here. I don't want it to get in the way. y2, the value of y2 is negative 1 minus the value of, of y1 negative 2. x2, the value is 0, minus x1, the value is negative 3. So I've got two negatives in a row, that turns that into a plus. Negative 1 plus 2 is 2. Two negatives in a row again, turns those into pluses. 0 plus 3 is 3. I just did some terrible arithmetic there. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. So, sorry about that. Anyway, the slope is 1 third. Don't mess up on arith arithmetic like I just did. You'll get the wrong answer for sure. So the slope is 1 third. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is finding b. Oh, I forgot. I was going to tell you how to count this versus how going through all of this nasty arithmetic, which is easy to make a mistake on, as I just showed. All right, the slope is also rise over run. So going from this point to, the, to this point, how much rise occurred? Well, you had a rise of one, didn't you? How much run occurred? Well, we went over one, two, three. So I had a rise of one and a run of three. So the slope there is one third. Either way you'd like to do it, it works fine. Find b. Well, b is really easy to find. It's negative 1. That's where it goes through the y-axis. So to write this equation, y equals 1 third x minus 1. Notice 
I calculated the slope in two different ways. It didn't matter which way I calculated it. I ended up with a slope of one-third, and it went through the y-axis at negative one, so it's y equals one-third x minus one. Okay, and if you need to, you can take this and convert it into standard form if necessary. All right, let's look at the second one. I need to find the slope. This time, let's go on ahead and let's calculate it by rise over run. Let's count it. All right, so we'd start here, and we need to get down to here. I always just start at the left-hand point. To get here, I didn't. To get down to here, I've got to go down one, two, three. I've got to go down four. Since I'm going down four, it's got a rise of negative four. And if I want to get over here, I've got to go to the right two. That gives me a run of two. So the m equals negative four over two. Well, that would be negative two, wouldn't it? But if you wanted to calculate it, we could look at this point right here. This point right here is zero, negative two. This point right here, it is two, uh, negative six, I believe. Let me just check it here. It goes over two and down one, two, three, four, five, six. I have two negative six. So if I put it into my formula, m equals y, y2, which would be negative six, minus y1, which would be negative two, <clears throat> over x2, which would be two, minus x1, which would be 0. Got a double negative in a row here, so that becomes plus plus. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. 2 minus 0 is 2. Negative 4 over 2. There's my negative 2 again. And then last but not least, what's the y-intercept? The y-intercept is negative 2, because that's the 0, that's your intercept point. So y minus negative 2x. Why? Because you put the slope in front of the x. And then minus 2, because minus 2 is the y-intercept. Well, there you have it. That is the basics of writing an equation when you have to pull it from a graph. Remember, and you're going to see this a lot when you're looking for finding the the formula of, a, of an equation. You want to calculate the slope, and you want to find the y-intercept. You do those two things, and you'll have it. Good luck.